YouTube fam, what is going on? It is your boy Dylan Flex. Guys, today you are in for a treat. It's kind of a last minute video that we're doing right now at the house. I'm actually having, well, I don't wanna say his name yet. You guys do know him, he's a really good friend of mine. He just hit me up. He's gonna come over and we're gonna do a little sneaker shopping. He's gonna come see what he likes at my house. Uh, this is just some of the stuff that I have here at this house. Uh, we're not going to my office. Like I said, it was like a last minute thing. I'm gonna lay out a couple shoes we're gonna go shopping with them. Next video, we're gonna go to his house, but today, he's at mine. Guys, stay tuned, let's see what we can make happen. All right, so we're doing some sneaker shopping at my house, I've never done this before. I'm gonna show you guys in one second who's at the crib right now. We actually pulled a couple things out. He's going through the list right now. Always steals when it comes to me, guys. You know that at Capital Vegas. Well, well, well. Guys, look who it is. Back in action. I still do a little shoes here and there. Here little, and there just for fun. A little shoe shopping now? A little shoe shopping. It's just, you know what it is? It's not even about the money. It's not about anything like that. It's really just like, I still have such a passion for this stuff. I grew up loving this kind of thing. So here and there, it's just fun to do it now and again. I literally told Dylan, I was like, I texted this morning, I was like, I'm kind of in the mood to do like a sneaker deal. Like, what do you think we could do? He's like, oh, come over. I'll make my house a sneaker shop and we'll do it. So. Here we are. That's what I just told him right now. So you want to run through in a second some of the stuff that you bought? Yeah, well look, we went over it. We created like a whole list of everything with prices and everything like that. Just like old times. I've honestly been really enjoying myself today. I was sick all week, so I've just been in bed like doing nothing, which has probably been like the most unique form of torture I've ever had to sit through. So now to just be able to do this is actually pretty fun. Besides shoes, on a side note, everything else is good because I know I still get a lot of messages about you. What's up with Blake? What's going on with Blake? Does he buy shoes off your feet? Talk to him. Well, he doesn't <laughs> buy shoes off my feet. He comes to the house now and our relationship is obviously still good. But yeah, a little bit about anything else, Blake, that you want to say? I still have all the same friends. I, I you know, I'm not as into shoes anymore. Um, I still have like a sneaker closet full of shoes. Um, but you know, it's weird. Like honestly, I wear these pretty much every day, which I did not buy off Dylan's feet. Although maybe, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dylan, if you want to buy them off my feet, look, uh, they're, they're, they're at least, uh, what, what condition is that? They're cool shoes. Oh, I think, you know what? It gives them character. I need to get a new pair though. So if anyone watching this has these in a size, like 11 to 12, hit me up on Instagram. Um, or hit Dylan up and Dylan will sell them to me and then I'll buy him off his feet, more content. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right guys, so we're sitting here with some of the stuff that Blake just bought right now. Um, I wanted to talk to you and I know I just talked to you guys in my last video about how to resell, how to buy shoes, but we didn't get to talk about bulk buying is and bulk selling. So right now what Blake and I are doing is I'm selling to him in bulk. So that pretty much means obviously that you guys know, but for the people that don't know, um, when you buy in bulk like this, I'm personally gonna give better deal to him or to anybody that buys in bulk. I get a lot of DMs and I get a lot of questions. Dylan, do you buy in bulk? Do you sell in bulk? Yes, guys, I do. I think buying and selling in bulk is obviously key. I think it's a good business model buying in bulk because obviously the profit margins are way better. It's easier to sell. Blake is right now looking through his phone, through StockX, through Goat, seeing the margins, obviously, what he can sell it for. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering and thinking, but what if Dylan, what if I don't have a lot of money to buy five figures worth of shoes in bulk? Well guys, you can start, this is why I always tell you this, if you wanna start, you can buy used shoes, you can go to outlets, you guys can buy shoes like that. That's why I always think, and I was getting a lot of DMs, guys, buying used shoes, is really easy. You know, it's really black and white when you buy a dead stock shoe. It really is what it is. When you go on Goat and you go on StockX, the price is what it is. When you buy used shoes, and if you do bulk deals, which Blake did, he have, we have a couple used, we have a couple new shoes in the mix right here, but you can get better prices when you do that. Go to outlets, guys. I see a ton of YouTube videos uh, on outlet shopping and stuff. It's great. It, Blake, is that how you started doing that too? Was Yeah, for Four years, I, I literally basically never even touched retros unless I got them at an outlet. It's a really good place to get brand new sneakers for a really, really good price. Yeah, he's right. All right, Blake, so you bought a couple things. Um, I wanted to not so much talk about the shoes that you bought, but you're reselling because you are a reseller still today. Um, I'm not, but. But, but a, little a little bit though, bit. still, right? A little bit still. Even the box is like, no, you're lying, stop it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think I think for probably the rest of my life, maybe two, three times a year, it's just inevitable I'll get this kick where I'm gonna go out. I don't know if it'll be 
Um, I know last year I did it twice. I actually didn't even make YouTube videos about it, but I went to the outlet mall here in Vegas. I bought like maybe 10, 20 pairs, threw them up on Goat or eBay or wherever I did and sold them and just had fun with it. But I love the hunt, you know, I mean, a lot of different entrepreneurs, whether it's Gary Vee doing the garage sale stuff or Grant Cardone doing like public speaking, like no matter who it is, a lot of different entrepreneurs just like to do kind of what first, what their first like kick into like that space was. And so for me, it was obviously sneakers. And so I do still like to do it, but I'm looking for a couple of things. I'm either looking for a price that's too good to be true because you don't, yeah, I mean, obviously reselling Dornbecker is easy is whatever, like Travis Scott's, that's really easy. But at the same time, I mean, if you get a shoe for like $10, pretty much doesn't matter what it is. You're able to resell it on different platform. It's a, it's a thing called arbitrage where you basically take something from one location and you put it on an, in another location where it's just worth more money, right? So buying something on StockX and then reselling it at Flight Club, obviously Flight Club takes a higher percentage and stuff, but I'm sure there's certain pairs where even, like you actually could probably make money doing that. Um, so that's the kind of the $10 strategy, right? And there's the flip side of it, which is something like easy, where it's like if you buy a product, and you obviously have to still get it for a, a pretty good price, but a product that everyone wants, right? Yeezys and Travis Scott's probably, and Off-Whites and Supreme probably makes up for like 85% of every reseller's True. sales, like in all, in all honesty. And then all the Jordans and all the, you know, random Adidas sneakers and stuff like that. All of that's just kind of filler to make it right, kind of round out your product line and stuff like that. But being that that is the bulk of it, whenever you get stuff like that, it's very hard to get stuck with it. It's very hard not to make money on it. And if you don't, I would say that that's more so because you paid too much for it or maybe you got scammed and got a fake or you know, maybe you bought a pair that's vulnerable to restock with Yeezys. That's probably something I'd definitely watch out for. If you, if you don't know that you can flip it fast and it's a Yeezy, you gotta be kind of careful. So you're Easy saying things. this is almost a guaranteed sell. Obviously, if it's not fake, this is more so, unless you paid high, this is guaranteed sales for the most part. Yeezys, off-white, stuff like that. Even if the margin is a little lower, you would do that as a guaranteed. Yeah, more so. we, yeah, especially too, right? Because if right, what we're talking about is buying in bulk and selling in bulk. And I think that if you're doing anything in bulk, your goal is obviously volume Correct. over margin. And so if that's the that's case, we're talking the about only too. way to do volume at high efficiency is to do it quickly. You have to have a quick turnover. The only way to do volume successfully is not to buy 80 pairs and then take 80 months to sell 80 pairs. You have to buy 80 pairs and have an entirely new 80 pairs by the next time because your margin is probably only gonna be like 10%, whereas even though you're getting a good deal because you're buying in bulk, you also want to give those pairs to the next person for a good deal. Because what people don't realize is a lot of the time in this sneaker space, resellers sell to other resellers. There's just more resellers than collectors right now because these products are like, are like stocks or assets. They have a value. Um, I think that that may catch up to this space soon rather than later. And that may be a completely different problem in the sneaker world. But for right now, it still works. And so when that is the case, you want to be quick with it because also, it's very rare that a shoe dramatically goes up in price to an extent that makes it worth it to hold on to the same way that a stock does, right? I mean, you talk about a stock like Apple or Amazon, that stuff constantly, right, goes up, right? The really strong companies pretty much always go up. If you hold it for years, like, there's no question, right? If you hold, like, a pure money Jordan 4 for years, I mean, sure, it might go up a little bit, especially after years, because then there's less and less people who have dead stock pairs. But for the most part, that is such such a bad strategy in comparison to turning that money over 600 times in the span of four years. That's exactly how I do it, and that's exactly what we talked about in the last video. So real quick, if you had to give a couple tips, like I know you just did, but to like the starters or people that are buying shoes now, what would you say to these people that like want to invest in shoes? This is what they want to do. I have messages all the time, Blake. This is what I want to do for a living. This is my side money. This is, this is stuff that I want to do. I'm so passionate about it. What are a couple things that you would tell them how to start? wise and even if even if they have started even if they have a couple shoes what would you say is like the go-to's to these people if you're a collector don't buy in your size everything you resell don't buy in your size don't that way you can't supply. wear it yeah yeah definitely don't do that i guess if you buy something that's used i know that you do this a little bit here and there yes you right you use, you wear the used inventory yeah, it's okay too right i mean the point is to it in any business you got to have some fun with it too if you guys so. want to flex a little bit there's nothing wrong with that i do do that a little bit blake's always <laughs> like so is this your personal or is this your i'm like brother it's, it's both everything is for sale there is nothing that is not for sale yeah i would advise that with very few exception obviously like if you get like an off-white one for retail. No, don't just accept any offer. But for the most part, if you're reselling and you get an offer that's for more than what you paid for it, you should pretty much just always take it. Like, 
I'm not saying, right, like not if, if a shoe's worth 800 bucks and you happen to get lucky, get it for retail, I'm not saying to take 200 so you can make 60 bucks, but like. You're saying don't be greedy about this situation. Don't be greedy, turn it over, because you can turn over money faster than you can wait for that perfect buyer. That's what I always tell people, you don't have to get rich off one shoe, keep it moving. That's you won't what I get tell rich them. off one shoe. That, that's think what about, I, yes. Think about it too, right? If you're all trying, like, if you're really trying to start a business where you're gonna make a bunch of money and make tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars, right? Is there any shoe in the world you can make a million dollars off of? No. 100,000? No. 10,000? Mm, Air Mags really? Like, but no. Right? Even a thousand's really, really tough to make off a shoe. So you literally can't get rich on one shoe. So at that point, you're talking about a couple hundred bucks. Maybe you lose out on $100 in profit. You still made a couple hundred dollars in profit on to the next By day. the time that you have sold that shoe, you have flipped your money so many times that it's not that's how you actually make the real money in, in this in this business. I promise you guys. If you can talk to anyone, whether it's the two of us, any sneaker store owner, look at the StockX people, right? Think about this from StockX perspective. They could give you guys so much data, right? That company has so much like tech behind it. That's what makes it such an amazing company, right? The one thing that they always highlight when you go on their app is it always says number of sales. Absolutely, And the yes. reason it does that is because it knows that the smart resellers, which are the ones that are really giving StockX the majority of its business, they want to know what moves in volume because that's what I want to buy. I want to move stuff that has a high, high, high volume frequency of being able to sell versus the stuff that's like two sales in the last year. It's like, yeah, maybe it sells for eight thousand dollars when a pair sells, but pairs barely ever sell. Right? You're gonna be stuck with that shoe, and you're gonna be you're gonna be mad at yourself that you have this inventory. And I'm sure a lot of people you've been stuck with shoes you probably thought it was a good buy at the time, and you're stuck with it, and you're like, I wish I could sell this. I want yeah. I want my money. I want you know money to reinvest in. So yeah, there's a reason why that's what they tell you. There's a reason why you know what stores even say, right? Everything in the sneaker world is always based on quantities, right? When a really hot shoe comes out, they don't say like, you have to pay in cash. You know, they don't care how you pay. They don't no. care any of that. They say one per person. The reason why, right? It all boils down to the volume because they know that like all the smart retailers, they'd want 50 pairs of them, right? It's Absolutely. Not, yeah. So, you know, I think that's definitely the biggest thing too, because I think a lot of people, it, it, it's hard too, because you know, so many people, if you're not really, really genuinely an entrepreneur, you're a little bit closer to a sneaker collector and connoisseur as opposed to entrepreneur. You just gotta be honest with yourself about it and know kind of what you're willing to do and not willing to do and, and, and see if this is a business that makes sense for you. But uh, it's definitely very profitable. Guys, just so you know, this is Las Vegas number one entrepreneur. So this is, so this is advice from the man himself. Blake, really quick before we end this, would you say, that shoes are like at all time high money wise, like for resellers. I know everybody's a reseller. I just was talking to you guys about everyone's a reseller. Do you think shoes are at all time high right now? What's your opinion on this? Yes, but it's honestly not because of shoes. It's okay. because of just how strong the economy is right now. Okay. The world economy, you know, not, to, not like I don't, I don't want to talk politics, like anything like that. Just in general, the economy, right? The stock market's at an all time high. Yes. So I'm sure like even your parents are, probably doing as well as they've been doing before, right? Unemployment's at a low. So there's just more money in the economy right now to be spent, right. especially discretionary dollars, which is a lot of times what goes towards shoes, right? The sneaker collector just has more money right now to go out and buy easy than they did eight years ago when like there was like that kind of like collapse in like the stock market or 12 years ago now, geez, I yes. kind of start to feel a little bit, right? Like that's literally the difference I think. And so I think that as much as sneakers are really strong right now, I think as the economy pulls back, whether it's in a year, six months, four years, however long it may take, no one really knows. And if they say they know, they don't, right? right? Like right. when it does pull back, you'll see it in sneakers the same way that you see it in anything else. And to be honest with you, once the economy pulls back, this shit is the first thing that's gonna go. You know, the, the, the shoe that you can buy for 10 and sell for 20, people are gonna need $20 sneakers. That's gonna be the way to get your new sneakers, if you can even get a new sneaker, right? The $300 used Yeezy, that's gonna be like, and that's why I tell you guys about use. I think it's easier to sell. I let the person take the hit that buys the thousand dollar shoe and they can buy it for half the price. I always let them take the hit. Usually they always buy the shoe because you don't have to have it. And there are some people that like to buy the shoe new and, and stuff like that, but it's so much easier to sell and to buy the shoe uh, used. So don't hesitate to buy used shoes. Blake, it was another great experience and shopping day with you. Blake bought some yeah. stuff. I don't know if he's gonna post it or what he's gonna do with the stuff now. Um, I'm not gonna get into all the stuff that he bought, but I'll show you guys some of the stuff and tell you guys when, he's, uh, when he leaves some of the stuff that he bought and show you guys the floor. But Mr. Entrepreneur of Las Vegas, you know, I appreciate you always stopping by. Thank you. I have a surprise too. We're actually gonna go to his house and we're gonna do a sneaker 
Would you say shopping video as well, or how did you yeah, want to say that? Come to my house, come in my closet, my laundry room, everywhere I keep sneakers and clothing and all that kind Every of stuff. Every dick and cranny and at the Wynn's house. He has a ping pong table he told me he just got. I, I really don't want to lose to him in ping pong. I'll put money on it. I've been practicing. Money. But yeah, oh so. Oh my God, I will. You I, see, look how competitive no, listen, he gets. I'll put money on it. We'll You're play to 21 and you won't score eight. All right, guys. Well, all I have to say is stay tuned for this. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you guys stay tuned for the reselling series. Man, I just wanna go fast. Hold on my teeth and on my